The announcement of Shingo Yabuki in KW15 was received with a lot of acclaims from the fans. Shingo has always been a fan favorite and the underdog of the roster whom everyone wants to see triumph. And although he's been absent as a playable character from the series since 11, he continued to show up either as a cameo in subsequent games or even in other medias, such as his starring role in the Gaiden manga, where his character evolved in a surprising direction. This video is by no means a complete summary of that manga, but I feel I need to point out the major events that took place in it, as they could be brought up in KOF later, if the manga is canon that is. Since I already made a dedicated video of Shingo, I won't dive again into his backstory in all its details. But for those who didn't watch the video, let's start with a short recap. But before that, as always, if you like this content, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified with every new video posted. Shingo's first appearance in KOF was in 97, filling the role of the comic relief to balance the dark tone of the edgiest entry of the series. Before his participation to KOF, Shingo was, and still is, Kyoko Sanagi's biggest fan who admires his ability of casting flames. He forced his way in becoming Kyo's pupil and trained hard in mimicking his moves and fighting style, all for the sake that one day he'll be able to cast flames as well. His participation to KOF 97 earned him the respect of Kyo, who expressed it through the gift of his gloves to Shingo, and since then he treasures those pairs of gloves to no end. At the end of the Nest Saga, Shingo became the disciple of Kyo's father in person, Saishu. The head of the Kusanagi clan saw the potential of Shingo, but never told him that the fire casting ability is hereditary in his family. In the manga, we learn that Saishu didn't mean to deceive Shingo. In fact, he believes that Shingo's dream of obtaining pyrokinetic powers isn't as hopeless of an endeavor as it seems. After all, how did the first Kusanagi acquire this power in the first place, as he confessed to Shizuru? Speaking of Shizuru, she was the one who asked Shingo to take her place in the Sacred Treasures team in 11, due to her injury from the prior KOF. 11 mark the last entry where Shingo is part of the KOF's roster. He was severely injured by Iori, who went berserk at the end of the game. He still didn't fully recover from that injury by the time of the manga. Iori's claws had left permanent scars on his body. Still, once he felt better, Shingo resumed his training under Saishu's tutelage. Now let's talk about KOF Gaiden, the recent manga featuring Shingo as its main character. As I mentioned, this is by no means a complete summary, but there are a lot of stuff in it that we need to talk about. If Gaiden is canon, which I'm not sure if it was confirmed or not, it takes place somewhere between the events of KOF 14 and 15. Shingo was training with Saishu as usual, when he was inexplicably sucked in by a vortex that threw him back in time, exactly 600 years in the past. This date is very important, because if you watched my Orochi Saga Explained video, that was the time when the enmity and hostility between the Kusanagi and the Yagami clan started. The moment he set foot in that time period, Shingo was attacked by a strange creature, but was saved by a mysterious individual with pyrokinetic powers. We learn that that man is Maga Yasakani, and he is Iori's ancestor. At the time, the Yagami clan was known as Yasakani, and their flames were just as crimson as the Kusanagi's. Shingo was taken into captivity by Magai for being very suspicious. Can't really blame the man for thinking that. During his fourth stay in the Yasakani's household, he had many sparring matches against Magai, though they always ended by the easy victory of the latter. We learn much later that Magai had made a pact with Orochi in the past to gain more power in order to meet the expectations of his clan as the Yasakani's heir and to break free from the shadow of his late older brother who was much stronger than Magai. Shingo made the acquaintance of Magai's wife who had telepathic powers. She was actually a descendant of one of the twelve maidens used during the ritual of Orochi's resurrection, just like Yuki. 
The time traveler also had the chance to meet Kyo's ancestor and even his own ancestor. One day, the Kusanagi and Yasakani clans were shocked to find that the seal of Orochi was broken and that one of the Hakishu was freed. Not only that, they found Magai at the scene of the crime. He was charged with treason and imprisoned by the emperor. In reality, the culprit was another member of the Yasakani clan who was stupid enough to believe that guarding the seal was pointless and nothing would happen if he breaks it. The result was the freedom of Genets, who possessed the body of that member of the Yasakani clan. And from that moment, he started his plan to divide the Kusanagi and the Yasakani clans, as he believed that as long as they work together, Orochi will never be resurrected. While Magai was imprisoned, Genet sent Vice and Mature to the Yasakani household. They easily injured and took down many of its members, even though they were using spare bodies and didn't have all their strengths. Their main target was kidnapping Magai's wife. Shingo tried to stop them, but they easily knocked him out. When I first read this chapter, I thought that this was a plot hole, because if Vice and Mature had already met Shingo in the past, then they should have recognized him in the present during KOF. But then it hit me. Vice and Mature never met Shingo in any canon KOF game. They died in 96, and Shingo wasn't a KOF character until 97. He remained a mainstay in the series until 11, while Vice and Mature were absent all that time. And right after that, they made their comeback in 13 and 14, while it was Shingo's turn to be left behind. I don't know if it's intentional, but the plot hole was masterfully avoided. Unless they put all three of them in a future canon game and somehow still have nothing to say to each other, that would be disappointing. Back to our story, Shingo's adventure in the past ends with a fight against Magai, who was under the influence of the Rise of the Blood, triggered by good old Genets. Shingo succeeded in bringing Magai to his senses with a punch infused with peculiar blue flames. Yes. Against all odds, Shingo somehow created his own flames out of thin air, just as Saishu foreshadowed. Kusanagi and Yasakani teamed up and put an end to Genets, whose spare body disintegrated. But his plan wasn't a complete failure either, as the seed of disparity and rivalry between the two clans had been already implemented. Shingo didn't get to celebrate the victory. He was immediately sucked in the time vortex back to the present. He discovered that time had frozen in the present during his adventure in the past, and he was wearing his original outfit again. Shingo concluded that all was just a dream, but the notes he took in his journal during his time travel to the past proved otherwise. As we all know, Shingo is coming to KW15 in a future DLC. This makes me wonder if his adventure in the guided manga will be mentioned in any way or if it was canon in the first place. Heck, I'm not even sure if he has any story elements or interactions, but let's not jinx it. In the manga, Shingo was portrayed as goofy as he's always been, but he must have become stronger than before as well, thanks to his sparring matches against Magai and Saishu's training. I'm looking forward to see his new moves and what he can do in 15. But the last thing I want, and many of you may disagree with me here, is seeing him having fire powers. I don't want to see Shingo becoming a fire user. Not only he doesn't need pyrokinesis, he might actually have a much stronger power all along without even realizing it. No, not the blue flames, it's time manipulation. Shingo was able to make a jump back and forth in time, something the manga didn't bother to explain. And there is the fact that he is voiced by Takihito Koyasu, the same guy who voiced Dio Brando in Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. And you know what's Dio's most terrifying ability? It's time freeze. Coincidence? Yeah, most likely. There is no way Shingo can become as strong as Psyche. Sorry about that. But in all seriousness, Shingo shouldn't become yet another fire user. We have more than enough of those. I even made a top 10 list of them. He just become another Kyo clone. And guess what? We already had a lot of those too. Shingo's most defining character trait, aside of the goofiness, is how strong he is despite being a completely normal everyday guy. 
is not the heir of a legendary clan and he has no genetic enhancements whatsoever, yet he still kicks butt, all thanks to his hard work. I believe that's the whole appeal of Shingo's character and I don't want that to be taken from him. I want him to become the strongest normal guy in the roster. His critical hits must return though. Special thanks to my patrons for their support. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And why not consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.